Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a potential explanation for the mysterious orcs or odd radio circles that we've discussed in several videos in the last couple of years. The unusual radio formations that were discovered completely by accident and created quite a lot of mystery when they were originally found. With the biggest mystery being what exactly are they, how exactly are they formed, and some other mysteries involving their properties, their actual size or even their shape. We basically knew absolutely nothing about them when they were originally discovered. And with only 5 officially reported so far, it was extremely difficult to figure out exactly what's going on here or basically even how big these objects were. They could be just a few light years across or they could be a few million light years across. With the most recent paper that, as always, you can find in the description below, providing some really interesting answers, and as of now being the best explanation for the existence of these unusual objects. But I guess let's start with a bit of a history of their discovery. And it all started only a couple of years ago, back in 2019. Back then, the scientists observing the night skies using one of the most powerful radio telescopes, the one from Australia known as the Parkes Observatory, completely by accident discovered these somewhat circular objects that were only visible in radio light, which is actually why they were not visible until that point. They were not producing any optical light, they were not producing any gamma rays, x-rays, or even infrared light, suggesting that whatever this was, it was only producing very specific radio frequencies. In this particular case, it was close to about 1.2 GHz in frequency. And upon their original discovery, well, first of all, it was just really unusual. We've never seen anything that potentially is really, really big, somewhat circular and potentially spherical in shape, but also something that's only visible in radio light. Pretty much every other circular or spherical object we've seen so far, an object produced by some kind of a massive emission from a star, or even some sort of a supernova, all of these objects would always produce sort of a combination of different frequencies. There would always be radio light, but there would also be, for example, x-rays, at least infrared light, and definitely at least some optical light, uh, which would allow the scientists to kind of analyze this and then determine what produced these particular structures. But in this case, this was something a little bit different, to some extent resembling what we sometimes see from various extremely large radio galaxies. But unlike a typical radio galaxy, where the jets often point at the location where they sort of originated, making it somewhat easy to explain how they formed. For these odd radio circles, it wasn't really clear even where they are actually coming from. The actual source of the circle, or the center of the circle, was not clearly defined. And so, up until this point, it was pretty much impossible for the scientists to figure out exactly what's happening here and to determine their possible origins. But now, the scientists have used several other telescopes, including the South Africa's Meerkat telescope, to first of all finally see what's happening in the center of these five known radio circles, but to also be able to explain their shape and explain their edges by looking at what's known as the polarization of the light coming from the center and from the outer shell of these odd radio circles as well. With, I guess, the first official confirmation being that these objects are very, very large much, much larger than the Milky Way galaxy and potentially even much, much larger than the so-called local group of galaxies, with all five circles enveloping several galaxies all at once. But on top of this, all five of them right in the middle did contain at least one relatively difficult to see galaxy, suggesting that this was probably the source of all of this. In other words, something in the middle of various galaxies, somewhere out there, produce these unusual and very, very powerful, but also very large formations. Here's just one of the examples of the odd radio circle that was analyzed in recent study. This is how large it would be. And it would actually reach this size in roughly around 1 billion years after the initial event that generated all of this. In other words, it represents some kind of a huge explosion of a lot of hot gas that seems to be traveling across millions of light years in space and is essentially one of the largest radio structures we've ever discovered. With the Meerkat telescope in this case, seeing a relatively small blob of radio light right in the middle of the center of the ring, which also seems to correspond to a very, very distant galaxy that's located in this region. 
something that was also detected around other orcs or other odd radio circles as well. With I guess these two being of particular interest because it is more or less obvious right there in the center. With all of this of course suggesting that it was these five galaxies responsible for the production of these five structures. Although more importantly, it was probably connected to the activity right in the center of those galaxies. Most likely, the activity from the central black hole or potentially some kind of a catastrophic event happening right at the center. With each of the galaxies discovered so far also being really far away, over a billion light years away from us, which is why it was kind of difficult to find them on the first try. And in this case, each of the rings visible inside the spherical shell is most likely a kind of a blast wave coming from the explosion that happened in this galaxy a long long time ago. But even though we kind of expect a more spherical formation even if it's some sort of an explosion, one of the main reasons this doesn't seem to resemble any type of a supernova remnant we've seen so far is most likely because this particular object just appears to be brighter in certain areas or certain edges of this object where there seems to be just a little bit more material along the line of sight to us. To some extent, comparable to, I guess, a soap bubble, where you don't actually see the entire sphere if you were to look at it from a certain angle. And also in this case, it's probably not a spherical soap bubble, but more of a odd-shaped one, where you do kind of see different frequencies and different emissions depending on the angle and depending on what's actually happening around it. But more importantly, the recent observations from Meerkat Telescope have also established what's known as the polarization along the edges of the bubble. With polarization in this case referring to the idea behind the twisting of the light. If the light is twisted in a certain direction, we can usually determine a lot of properties of the source or what the light actually went through. And so in this case, the mapping of the radio waves around the odd radio circle allow the scientists to map the magnetic field around the ring, which seems to run along the entire edge of the sphere, and which also suggests that whatever exploded in this galaxy then later on collided with a lot of gas, intergalactic gas, present between galaxies in various clusters. And so when all of this gas then started to interact with electrons present in the interstellar gas, that's when a lot of the magnetic field was generated, producing the radio observations we see. Although in this case, inside each of these rings that were produced by the original explosion, there also seem to be some strange filaments that seem to be also in radio light, whose origin is currently unknown. And although they might be related to some of the other radio filaments we discovered in one of the previous studies, with the video describing this in more detail that you can find somewhere right there or in the description below, in this case, because this is still a new discovery and a new study, there are still potentially a lot of explanations for what we're actually seeing on the inside. With one suggestion being that, well, maybe it's actually gas that was stripped by the explosion as it traveled away from the center and as it started to interact with some of the other galaxies that it passed through, kind of like what you see right here. But it's still not clear what happens when these events occur. Or to be more exact, it's not even clear what this particular event would be to generate such a tremendously powerful explosion that's only visible in radio light. With one potential explanation, of course, involving the central supermassive black holes. In this case, maybe a collision between the two. Maybe that's actually what happens when two supermassive black holes collide, forming a larger object. Because we expect such an event to release a tremendous amount of energy, that's one of the possible explanations, which would also help us resolve that old mystery known as the final parsec problem. More about this somewhere right there or in the description. But it could also be related to what's known as the starburst event, or essentially when a galaxy suddenly starts to produce thousands or actually millions and millions of different stars relatively quickly. These events, because they're so powerful, do have a chance to produce a lot of hot gas leaving the galaxy, which can then collide with the intergalactic gas as well, producing some of the radio emissions we're observing. And because both of these events are expected to be kind of rare and are more or less theoretical for now, mostly because they've never really been observed in real life, the fact that we've only found five such odd radio circles in the entire universe would provide some evidence to at least one of these explanations. Although I guess until future observations, or more specifically until even more powerful telescopes, we're not going to actually know what's happening here for sure. But once the so-called square kilometer array becomes operational and becomes the most powerful radio observatory we have, 
something that's actually going to look kind of like this in the next few years. This will definitely help us not just see more of radio light around the universe, but very likely definitively solve a lot of radio mysteries, including the mystery of orcs. Although chances are, just like with orcs, because of the new resolution and new abilities, we might discover even more radio mysteries because they were just too invisible with current technology. Which once again, as I mentioned before, means that it's a super exciting time to be a radio astronomer. A lot more mysteries and a lot more unusual events are going to be discovered in the next few years. And by 2030 we might actually have so much more to talk about, with some phenomena potentially allowing us to explain a lot of different things in the universe. But until these new discoveries, or until more confirmation or more discoveries, that is all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.